Welcome to the Church Solutions Podcast, brought to you by JSL Solutions. The Church Solutions Podcast is designed to help equip you and your church in the use of technology and other tools and services. And now, here are your hosts, Steve Lacey and Phil Thompson. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. I'm Phil Thompson. And I'm Steve Lacey. And we come to you every week with this podcast that is designed to uh, to really help you as a pastor, assistant pastor, a volunteer, somebody that's a leader in your church. Uh, we want to help you. We want to, and, and, and we're a tech company called JSL Solutions. I think this time, Steve, will talk a little bit about what we do afterwards. That sounds good. So we can just get right to the topic, but we, we are a tech company, but we are uh, people that work with churches and have been involved in churches pretty much all our adult lives. And so we have a real heart for ministry and we like to, uh, we like to try to give you some good information that would help you in whatever you're doing at your church. Yes. And today we're actually going, and there's a little bit of tech related to this material today, but today we're going to talk about really some effective ways you can recruit volunteers. Yep. This is a problem in every church. <laughs> it's an opportunity, not a problem. Oh, it's not. Okay. It's, it's, <laughs> it, I know it, it's a challenge to recruit <laughs> and retain uh, a great set of volunteers with a lot of ministries. Well, it, it is. And I mean, it, and, and to be honest, it, it can be a problem at times, uh, depending on you. And it can be a problem whether you're a new church, a large church, a small church, an old church. Uh, because you want to make sure you have some volunteers, some 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 newer, fresher faces involved. And there's lots of reasons why that should happen. Uh, first of all, when you get people, especially newer people, involved in your church, your ministry, it helps them connect. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's and, and that's really the way you need to look at it. Yes, it will help you get something done, <laughs> but but. The bottom line is, if you're really looking over the, the big picture, right, and it's a logical step in anyone's spiritual growth. You know, their next steps um, yeah. to get to get involved with the church, and it just you know, and you can you, it's helpful you, you for them grow, and it's helpful learn. for the church as well. Yeah, uh, a friend of mine, in fact, he's your friend too. Uh, Jeff Love says, if I want to have a friend, all I have to do is ask them to help me do something. And, and, you know, I thought about, they told me that years ago and I thought, you know, that's, that's actually pretty accurate. I I've even done that recently. I I had somebody that I didn't know very well, help me with a garage door opener. And I knew the guy at my church, but, uh, he, he actually volunteered to give me a garage door opener that he had. I said, well, yeah. I said, could you come over and help me install it? And he said, sure. Mm -hmm. And it turns out we didn't need to install it. We just took the capacitor out of one and put it in the other, but in the meantime, we got to talking and got to know each other yeah. a little bit, and and uh, I felt like I'd made more I, of a connection with him. I did that with a neighbor here recently too. Yeah. So, uh, so getting people involved in your church is it's it's a good thing for them as well as for your church. Mm-hmm. So, what we're going to do here is give you some some thoughts here, and so you see if you agree with them on on how you could be a little more effective in recruiting volunteers. Uh, because it, it is important to what you're trying to do. So I think the first thing, which is probably obvious, but a lot of people don't do it. The first thing is... Is to ask. Simply ask. I mean, the congregation won't always assume that there's a need. And and so I, I know that sounds too simplistic just to ask, but but really asking... <laughs> the best way to get things going. And and when I say ask, we got a little list here of how you can ask. Yeah. But one of the things, I'm not sure I put this on the list because I did this a while back. But one of the things I found is is just tapping somebody on the shoulder <laughs> and saying, hey, uh, we, we got some things going on here. Would you would you like to be involved in something here? And, and you know, maybe specifically say what it is. Yeah, that's yeah, we're kind of cutting to the chase on the list. This is yeah. actually my favorite on the list as well, or the most effective. Yeah. And it can't be, I mean, for for me, I think what's most effective is, hey, you look like you would be a really good guy on the AV team. Or, man, you right. really get get along really well with these kids. Let's, let's mm-hmm. see if you wanted to get plugged in on the you know youth yeah. group or the children's ministry. Yeah. And and it that has been the most effective because a lot of times, 
and we'll go through some of these other ways that that are asked is a lot of people go oh they're not talking about me they're not talking about me when when so another thing i'm not sure we're going to get into this is um you don't want to you know i think we've talked about this before is you don't want to highlight your needs but you want to highlight you know the needs of the church because that really doesn't um often appeal or connect with the people right, right? yeah so, well you can certainly that, that's a good point uh maybe we'll cover that here in a few minutes so so what are some other ways to ask yeah, so, so the, besides the personal touch which is always the best yes. and, and, and we bring that up because i don't know about you but i i've got some leaders in my church that are very uh, uh introverts and so it's they're kind of uncomfortable at times going up to people they don't know very well. Mm-hmm. But I, I'd really encourage you to do that, to, to just really step on ass. But but you could obviously, the church bulletin or the church program, if it's well written, you could certainly list it there. And, mm-hmm. and, and again, the key to some of this stuff is how you present it, how you write it, kind of like even as you said, uh, you know, you just don't want to just say, well, we got a need here, so fulfill it. But, you know, how do you how do you address that need and and really make it so so obviously putting it in a program is it, it can work it can be okay depending on your situation another way would be to use i don't know about your well i know your church and my church is sim- similar we have a couple screens in the in what we call our gathering room uh, where people gather to worship and, and all that stuff uh, we have a couple projectors and so we have uh, literally a slideshow running uh, mm-hmm. before and after the service. And so we have lots of activities and events going on that come up on slides, enough time for people to read them and get information. But also, you know, if you've got a need, you can address that on a slide yeah. in a creative or, way. Or opportunities to serve. Yeah, opportunities to serve with some nice graphics. Right. Uh, you know, some, something, and then maybe even listing what those opportunities might specifically be. Mm-hmm. The next would be posting in a newsletter, if your church has a newsletter. Your, your newsletter uh, is important. Hopefully, you know, I would I would hope that you're sending out your newsletter via email. Uh, maybe some churches aren't. But again, you can do some nice graphics in your, in your newsletter, and you could always have a little place. And, and you don't want to overload it with all these needs, but maybe feature a ministry once a week or maybe a ministry once a month where you mm-hmm. feature it. And you say, hey, this is whatever our ministry here. And by the way, if you'd like to be involved, and, and you know, here's how you can get involved. Mm-hmm. And then, then another opportunity to um, get the opportunities out, uh, made aware with everyone would be announcements from the stage. Yeah, and, and this, is, uh, this is a pet peeve of mine, although there is a time mm-hmm. and a place for it. I'm not saying you can't do it, but like, for instance, I have people in my church. I work part time for this church and I'm kind of their executive pastor, executive director. And so uh, I, I'm very part time. But uh, I many times I do the announcements and I always have people come up to me and say, can you announce my this thing that I've got going on? Can you announce we you know, and, and we do a lot of social justice work, you know, helping the homeless and helping fix people's homes and you know well you need to announce this well yes we can announce it but if you're just solely relying on that announcement it's not usually the most effective way but it certainly can be a part of what you're doing Mm -hmm. but if you're just looking for the announcement to get the job done uh and I'll get to this in a minute. I don't have it on the list but I'll get to it. But if you're if you're just looking at from somebody in the platform talking about it it's okay, but it's not the best. Yeah, there's you got to go in and do your part of that as well. Plus, that's a it's a time. It's like the worst time of the service when you've got announcements. Announcements, announcements yeah. Well, you know, Steve and I we do streaming video, and many times we're you know on the weekends we're kind of looking in on churches that are streaming, and especially newer churches. Hope you know making sure they're doing okay and all that. And I know you've run across and I have too, where there's the announcement time and it's like, it's almost like another sermon. I mean, it's like <laughs> another 20 minutes of announcements and, and, and we've talked about this in other podcasts, but if your announcements are, I think if your announcements are over five minutes, in fact, I think five minutes is too long, Yeah. but if, if your announcements are going over three or four minutes, I don't think that's a good thing. 
uh, especially if you're trying to reach newer people and you're really trying to get things accomplished in your service, because uh, I don't know how much, I don't know how many horror stories I want to get into here, but there's this one church that I went to and, and after the pastor was done, he went a little over time, but after the pastor was done, then they had announcements and it wasn't just the one guy standing up doing announcements he would make some announcements and then he would invite other people Mm -hmm. from the congregation to stand up and make their announcements. And so you had, it's like, you know, it's like people popping up all over the auditorium saying, Oh yeah, I've got this going on here, Mm -hmm. you know? And and the, and the negative thing about that, and, and I mean, there may be some churches listening to this podcast that do this exact thing. And I'm sorry if I'm offending you, but the truth is, Unless you know that person making the announcement, and maybe you do, but it, but if you're newer and you, you don't know who this Joe Smo is saying, yeah, come out to my place and we're going to go. I'm having a garage sale. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how are you supposed to contact them? How you, you know, I mean, unless you know them and, 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 you know, it's just, it becomes a big ball of confusion. And oh, it sounds like we touched a sensitive area with you. <laughs> well, it is. It's a pet peeve I have. And sorry if, if your church is doing stuff like that, but. You, you really ought to relook look at it again and redo it. Maybe right. I don't know. So, so the first thing, the first tactic in the most simple task tactic is to just ask. I would ask, and then these other things we're mentioning. One of the things you we didn't mention here in this list is graphics around strategic locations around your church building. So you could put up some nice signage, uh, you know, that looks nice, and post it somewhere where people gather, maybe by the water fountain, maybe by where they get coffee. And the thing you and I have talked a lot about over the the last couple of years is the men's restroom in yes, front of the, the urinal. The effective placement of the, yes. The sign in front of the We've urinal. Learn that from the restaurants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you could do some of that if you, if it's well done. You can recruit volunteers by using graphics and signs around the church. Right. And I emphasize well done, <laughs> not somebody's kid making a sign out of a crayon. And you know what I'm saying? So. I don't know. I probably just got offended probably a lot of people, but that's where I'm at anyhow. So as we talk about recruiting volunteers, you know, personal touch is great. Program's good. Newsletter's good. Graphics on the screens. If you have that feature in your church where you have video running between services, uh, announcements from the platform can help. Personal invitations are the best. But, you know, the bottom line is it's not a guilt trip. It should not be a guilt trip. Don't put don't throw guilt on people. But, uh, you know, ask them and, and see what happens. You would be surprised. All right. So asking is the first. And then number two on our list here is a way to recruit some volunteers is to conduct an open house. You know, an open house is a great way for people to come and see what's happening in your area of ministry, your department, your whatever you're calling it. Uh, you know, especially this is a podcast that normally talks about technical things, technical ministry and all that stuff. Well, you know, the technical arts, so to speak, uh, people love to see what's going on behind the scenes. I mean, we, we actually did some, we did like a streaming video where we went behind the scenes at your church used to be my church. And we showed people behind the scenes of the streaming, all the work, all the cameras and mixers and all the stuff we did for streaming video. And, And people really, that was one of our more popular streaming things that we used to do years ago. Right. Uh, people like to see what's going on behind the scenes and uh, especially in the technical department. So if you're looking for people to help you run sound, help you with cameras, help you maybe in the, in the area of streaming video where you've got people, you know, working on the live encoders and the platforms and all that stuff, show them stuff behind the scenes, do an open house. Mm-hmm. And you can do that for kids ministry. You can do that for really almost anything, you know, provide some refreshments, provide, you know, an opportunity for somebody that knows what's going on to show them around a little bit and and give them an opportunity to see what happens behind the scenes. Uh, And I think if you do that. At our church, we used to call it a ministry fair. Yeah, I remember. I used to be in charge of that. So, yes, it would be allow people to come in and just check it out and see what goes on in this area. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so as we continue to talk about how to effectively recruit people for volunteer help, uh, you really want to keep the process as simple as possible. So I know of some churches that if you want to be a volunteer, great. Now you have to fill out four sheets of paper and 
you know, interview with Chuck and yeah, mm -hmm. you know, do this and do that. And then maybe we'll let you, I'm not real big on that approach. Uh, unless it's really called for, unless it's really necessary. Like I could see if you're going to do children's ministry, yes. you probably want to do background checks. You should do background checks of some capacity. You should probably make sure that the person you're interviewing that, you know, for the volunteer wants to work in children, you, you probably should really sit down and maybe fill, have them fill out some kind of an app and then sit down and talk with them. Mm -hmm. That's very important. But there's other areas of church work that that may not be necessary. Right. I mean, there's, I, I think of um, actually training someone to use the switcher. And rather than, you know, you could say, well, we're going to have to do a class and then we'll make sure you know what you're doing. And then, you know, this yeah. sort of thing. You basically just pull somebody up and say, here's how this thing works. And why don't you watch for half the service and then, then you drive for the other half of the service. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, you know, by... You know, it takes it gets people acquainted and in place very quickly without a lot of hassle. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, try to keep it as simple as, uh, as possible so the process isn't overwhelming for people and you can get them plugged in and get them involved right away and uh, maybe do some other things. Uh, and then some churches do a, a thing which I think can be good, and that's a web sign up approach. And so that they have something designated on their website, a page that they've set up. So that, uh, you know, you could go around as, as, as somebody that may be leading that area of ministry. You can carry some business cards that have, you know, a, a URL that people can go to. Yeah, so these are special business cards. So, so they that, would be special. So everyone on the team would have the these business cards and they could hand out, hey, you're interested in children's ministry, interested in Navy or whatever. And it would give them a link to a website that would have all the frequently asked questions. Right. FAQs for that area and the opportunity to sign up. Yeah, I, they, I like this idea. I've not yeah. been exposed to it at another churches, but this sounds like that could definitely but, mix it an easy way to refer and get people going. Yeah, they could just sign up, and then and then obviously you want to follow up with them when they do sign up, and, right? And, exactly. And make the personal contact and connect, but it it can be a good way, especially if you're trying to do several things and you can put some cards out or even print the URL or something on the, in the program. Hey, go here to this website and go, you know, and fill it out and we'll call you and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll get the thing going. So, so, you know, it gets people, it's, it's, you're thinking outside the box, so to speak, and you're, you're getting people involved and uh, they get an opportunity to sign up and, and they can sign up anywhere too. They can take the card and take it home mm -hmm. and there's a possibility they might do it at home, you know, and they might do it on their phone or something, you know, or they may give the card to another friend. Yeah. I so. mean, it, it's, it's one possibility. So, right. so, and let me say this too, as, as we're, this is not on the list, but a, another thing that I think for effective volunteer recruitment, I, I know that there are certain people in the church that are, you know, like, for instance, my little part-time gig with the church I'm at, okay, technically I'm responsible for volunteers. But what I found out years ago, what really worked is to assign team leaders to each area of, of ministry. So it, it's not just me that's in charge of recruiting volunteers as a leader, right. but I have team leaders that are overseeing, you know, overseeing the children's ministry, overseeing the tech team, overseeing the music team, or whatever it might be. It's their responsibility. Right. And it, it's it's actually, it's a gift as well. I know that um, at our church, we've had some people that are just rock stars when it comes to recruiting people. They're really good at, at, at drawing people in and getting them to sign up. I know um, my wife will claim that she is not one of those at all. She said that's her most awkward thing is to approach someone to help her out. But uh, there's others that have just, you, I could name some names here and you go, oh yeah, that, that person is really gifted at yeah. bringing in volunteers. Well, and, and as a team, and, and let me get back to this team leader approach, because I, I feel like there's probably some people listening to this podcast and, and you're a, maybe a key volunteer that's in charge of other volunteers or you're a deacon or something. And a lot of that may fall on you, but if you can get some whatever you want to call them. We, I call them team leaders. You can call them whatever you want, but somebody that's in charge of those areas, for instance, uh, and we're getting into this moment, but you know, when I kind of first took, came into this church I'm working with now, uh, it's kind of was a restart and I got them turned on to a program called worship planner. 
And Worship Planner is what I was going to mention here is a program you can use for volunteer recruitment. And you can you can also use it to actually organize your volunteers and get them scheduled. And I think is your church your church used to use it, right? Are yes, they we did. It? They switched. They switched yeah. to something else. So, but any kind of a program like that will help. But again, they had one guy doing all this. And my my thing is, let's get different people overseeing. Like we have greeters and ushers. I finally it took me almost three years, but I finally got somebody to oversee the greeters and the ushers. And to schedule those people, recruit those people, right? get them all scheduled. Well, I think that's, yeah, I think it's a given that you want wow. each of your team leaders to be recruiting volunteers within their own yeah. area. And let them schedule them too. And and, and with, a, with a program with some kind of software like Worship Planner, or there's other ones out there you could use, then it's not as hard. Once you get them in the system, you can, you know, it's easier to work. But I know there's people listening and they're like, oh, I got this calendar in front of me and I got to make sure this is covered. I got to make sure the kitchen's covered. I got to make sure hospitality. I've got to make, you know, and it can be overwhelming. And right. and if you can get some people helping you and assign them areas, designate areas, delegate, it makes life so much easier. And uh, you'll have less problems, less headaches. And again, uh, I, I mentioned Worship Planner. There's other programs out there you could use. In fact, there's probably a variation of MyFlock, a program we have. You could probably do some of that, right, with MyFlock. Can you schedule people to do things? Or am I off base on that? Um, I know we have visitor follow-up and all those things. Yeah, with, but no, uh, there's, there's not a... Maybe we should design it. There we go. Yeah. But there, there's other programs out there that you could use. And they're, they're not... Most of them you do have to pay something on, but they're not extravagant. And, right. Uh, something good. So, you know, we're heading towards Easter. <clears throat> Volunteers are important, especially with Easter. It's the most popular time of the year. So you're going to make sure you want to make sure you got all your bases covered, you know, mm -hmm. with parking lot, and greeters, ushers, and all the hospitality stuff. So, you know, if you can get a jump on the volunteer thing now and get some involvement in it, uh, you'll make a difference for the new people coming to your church. And then the people that are involved in the volunteer, they're going to get something out of it. And if you can keep getting a good inventory, I don't know how to say it other than being technical inventory of volunteers. Then you won't burn out the same people that you've got. Oh yeah, that's true. Because that's that's it's easy to fall in a trap. Oh, we got Sue's head in the kitchen area. She's head, she's a head of hospitality, so she does this and that. Well, maybe Sue needs some help. Right. She might not say it. Or Sue needs to go on vacation once in a while, and yeah, there's you need some backups. Right. So backups yeah. for the backups. So anyhow. Uh, we hope this helps a little bit. JSL Solutions is a company that helps churches use technology primarily. What do we have, Steve? So we have four main products. So we provide live streaming um, services through streamingchurch.tv, a church app live. It's a mobile app product, MyFlock, which is church management websites, and our latest adventure, greeter.church, which is an online Greeter for a live you. online greeter. So people, and I, I repeat this every time because I think people are like, well, okay, what's the website? Well, it's greeter.church. No, no, what's the website? Greeter.church. No, no, what's the website? Dot church is the actual. That is the location. That's the, it's not the domain. What do you call that? The It is the, the domain. Dot church is a domain. So oh, it's a top level domain. Top level domain. That's what you, so you have dot orgs, you have dot coms, you have dot TVs, you have a lot of different domain level, but dot church is actually one now. So greeter dot church is what you type into your browser. Exactly. You'll find it. So we're done. Hey, if you have any questions about this or want to add to it or think, think I'm off the wall, uh, maybe I am. Let's hear from you. Support at streaming church TV, where you can always go to our websites anytime and uh, leave a message there. Or if we happen to be around during live business hours, you can talk to a live person because we also use greeter.church on all our websites. That's chat true. With a live person besides those other things. All right. Have yourself a great day. He's Steve Lacey. I'm Phil Thompson. We'll catch you next time on another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Take care. <laughs>